diseases of eggplant uh, in india uh, eggplant is normally called as brinjal in most of the foreign countries if you see out countries uh, or uh, western countries they will usually used to call it as a eggplant so now we'll see the list of important diseases in brinjal so my name is nh shankar reddy and i am doing phd plant pathology in anamal university so these are all the list of important diseases in brinjal the first one is the damping off which is caused by a variety of species that is pithium affini dermatum or pithium indicum phytophthora parasitica rhizoctonia solani sclerotium dalsi these are all the different types of species which is involved in the uh, causing of uh, damping off in a uh, uh, brinjal second one is pomopsis pomopsis blight or fruit rot sorry fruit rot which is caused by pomopsis vexans third one is the leaf spot which is caused by cercospora melangeni fourth one is alternaria leaf blight which is caused by alternaria melangeni uh, fifth one is uh, uh, verticillium wilt which is caused by verticillium dali the next one is a bacterial leaf spot which is caused by pseudomonas solanaceae so from damping up to verticillium wilt these are all the diseases which is caused by uh, uh, fungi here uh, uh, this is a bacterial leaf spot which is caused by bacterium that is pseudomonas solanaceae so the next one is a collar rot it is also a fungal disease which is caused by sclerotium dalsi a little leaf little leaf is caused by phytoplasma then the last one is a viral disease that is a uh, mosaic which is caused by tobacco mosaic virus now we'll see in detail about one by one so the first one is the damping of as i told you the variety of species which is involved in the uh, damping of disease in uh, uh, you know uh, brinjal the first one is a uh, uh, pithium affini dermatum so most of the damping damping of disease is normally caused by pithium affini dermatum only so if you see the symptoms in uh, uh, brinjal uh, mostly uh, the damping of is confined to the nursery stages only so if you see the symptoms in uh, uh, in brinjal we can see here a radical and pumule or radical and as well as pumule are coming uh, uh, out from uh, uh, soil as well as uh, uh, poor germination and uh, uh, poor germination of uh, seedlings that we can observe so even though if uh, uh, if the seedlings are get emerged the pathogen infects the root at collar region collar region in the self so let us consider it is if it is a roots or all those things so the region just above the soil or just above the soil is considered as collar region so even though if it gets uh, merged out from the soil so the pathogen that is pithium affini dermatum other species can infect especially at the collar region the region which is above just above the soil region so the infected species as a very quite a common symptom is if the uh, if the you know plant get infected by damping off so uh, the tissues will become softening on later stages of water i mean uh, uh, you know uh, watering or water soaked uh, uh, lesions can be observed not only lesions the main uh, symptoms is you know uh, softening of the uh, uh, area where the disease are uh, where the particular pathogen is confined to that is collar region so the softening of the collar region can be happen so that we can so that what happen so if the collar region can be softened with that the plant uh, can lose the stability because the strength comes from the uh, roots or the strength comes from the collar region so that uh, uh, the plant can uh, uh, lodge you can say lodge the plant can be died i mean the seedling can be died so coming to the management aspects uh, use light soil for uh, nursery and uh, raised seed bed because raised seed bed is the best management for the control of uh, damping of disease not only in brinjal but also in uh, tomato and other crops also so and uh, uh, the next one is uh, frequent irrigation better drainage facilities along with the uh, drenching with the uh, copper fungicides at 8 to 10 days interval can be uh, gives a better control so hope you guys will know about uh, what is copper fungicides you know bodomichar burgundy michar all these are comes under uh, uh, cop- i mean uh, uh, copper fungicide group only so the next one is pomopsis blight and fruit rot so pomopsis blight and fruit rot which is caused by pomopsis vexans if you see the symptoms the major symptoms are the main symptoms are confined to fruit only if you see the symptom confined to fruit only you no need to uh, look at the symptoms we can see the fruit itself we can uh, aim, uh, we can do it here itself so if you see the leaf area initially leaf area what will happen the small spots will appear on a leaf area small circular spots appear on a leaf area that won't be a big issue but the main thing that we have to concentrate here is if you see the symptoms on uh, fruit we can see white color mycelial growth or white color mycelial growth along with the softening and disintegration of tissues can be mainly observed on uh, fruit regions if you see the fruit 
softening and white color mycelial growth or softening and disintegration of tissues along with the mycelial growth can be observed and the shrinking of tissues also can be observed if you see the here the tissues are completely shrinked here so the shrinking of tissues and the softening of tissues can be clearly seen in later stages what will happen the fruit completely shrink it look like to dried fruits like uh, uh, you know fig or kiwi something like it completely dried and shrinked in uh, uh, it will take the tissues uh, inside so that it completely look like a, a mummified fruit or later stages a black color mycelial growth or initially white color mycelial growth later turned into little bit black color so the main uh, are symptoms of the homopsis blight is that is a white color uh, mycelial growth along with the tissue disintegration and softening of tissues and the shrinking of tissues also can be observed especially in fruits this is the most important symptom of uh, brinjal homopsis blight which is caused by homopsis vaccines so coming to the management as aspects uh, uh, seeds should be dipped in hot water that is the hot water dip. that is the physical uh, 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 methods of management of plant disease these are you know uh, this uh, uh, hot water treatments all comes under physical method so 50 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes so before if you are planting or if you are planning to planting a brinjal make sure that you uh, you seeds uh, if there is any record of appearance of homopsis blight in previous years so it's a better to go with hot water treatment of uh, brinjal seeds and the spraying of uh, defoliation uh, sorry uh, defoliation 0.2 percent or captain 0.2 percent in the nursery stages of field at 7 to 10 days interval also can uh, uh, give relief from the disease and deep summer plowing three year of uh, crop rotation and collection and destruction of uh, stubbles or you know uh, uh, crop debris will be uh, very very essential because sometimes this crop debris also can act as alternative host for uh, sorry collateral host for some other pathogen so it's a better to collect all that debris all that's unnecessary materials in the field and better to destroy it and spraying of uh, crops with the zinup 0.2 percent or bodomiture 0.8 percent is also uh, very effective against homopsis blight as i told you that uh, copper fungicides this the bodomiture burgundy mixture uh, and the chestnut compound this all comes under copper group of fungicides so uh, spraying this all this uh, management practices will give uh, better relief from the disease Third one is a, a leaf spot which is caused by Cercospora solani melangine or Cercospora solani. So uh, as we already seen that uh, most of the diseases uh, have, uh, you know, uh, uh, the symptoms are mostly included in the name itself. If it is a leaf spots, the spots can be observed on leaves. So if it is a uh, wilt, wilting of uh, leaves can be observed, something like that. So mostly the symptoms can be uh, uh, you know uh, mostly the symptoms can be there in the name itself or the disease name itself so if you see here the leaf spots the name itself indicates spots can be observed on leaf so which is caused that is caused by cercospora if you see here in a cercospora leaf spot what will happen initially so small we can see here irregular shaped spots or small irregular shaped gray brown color spots these spots are gray or brown in color we can see here gray brown color spots initially we can see on small spots so later what will happen the all the small spots coil edges and they look like to very big spots we can see here so so this is the normal symptoms so in later stages what will happen in the severe stages the small spots coil edges and later yellow color symptoms uh, i mean yellow color discoloration of leaves also can be observed in what will happen this is a result due, due to this uh, uh, cercospora leaf, uh, leaf spot the leaves will die and premature defoliation can be observed and the yield also can be reduced due to if the leaves amount of leaves can be reduced transpiration and respiration also can be reduced so that the amount of uh, uh, number of fruits and as well as the fruit quality also can be affected so it finally affects the yield of uh, 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 brinjal so coming to the management aspects uh, we can recommend uh, uh, there are some resistant varieties can be available for a leaf spot that is uh, Panth Samrat variety which is the resistant variety for this uh, Cercospora leaf spot and we can also grow some resistant varieties as I told you that uh, Panth Samrat resistant variety and the spraying of 1% Bodo mixture are 2 grams of copper oxychloride not 2 grams I think it's a 2% it's a, my mistake so 2% of copper oxychloride or 2.5% of uh, Jinnap per liter of water can effectively control this Cercospora leaf spot. So coming to the next one that is alternaria leaf spot which is caused by alternaria solanir or alternaria melangine. I think we had seen uh, so far we had seen more than uh, 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 50 diseases uh, 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 on various uh, uh, on 50 various diseases on crops from uh, from rice to uh, uh, you know uh, I think last one is a colocasia I think so. So so far we had seen almost 50 or 60 videos again disease uh, against various diseases. So whatever the alternaria leaf spot you can take the most prominent or the most common symptom is concentric rings. 
so we can see brown color irregular shaped concentric rings we can see here ring like appearance we can see here brown color irregular shaped concentric rings can be observed on alternate area leaf spot infected plants in a later stages what will happen initially small spots only can occur in later stages the small spots coalesces and they will become very big spots so in later stages it covers entire leaf area and yellowing of uh, leaves also can be observed in severe stages so this is the most prominent symptom that is a concentric rings is the most prominent symptom later stages the fruits also get affected uh, due to this uh, uh, you know as i told you that uh, the leaves got uh, affected the respiration and uh, uh, the rate of uh, transpiration also get affected so that the food uh, fruit quality also finally uh, leads to you know uh, finally get affected so coming to the management aspects uh, nursery application of mancozip at the rate of 0.2% or uh, Difolatan 0.2 percent or Captan 0.2 percent can be recommended for 10 to 15 days uh, interval once the disease has been uh, uh, appeared. So the next one is the bacterial wilt, which is caused by Pseudomonas salicylarum. So we also, uh, I think we had seen before uh, fungal wilts. I mean different types of fungal wilts and bacterial wilts also. So here wilt, the name itself indicates wilting of plants, which is caused by bacteria. That's why it's called a bacterial. It's a fungal wilt, the wilt which is caused by fungi. So here in the bacterial wilt, the main prominent or common symptoms are initially in the wilting. What will happen? Yellowing of leaves can be observed, drying or wilting of leaves and stunting of leaves can be seen. The major symptom is yellowing of leaves, stunting of leaves, or wilting or stunting of leaves. And finally, the plants get died in a, in a severe stages. So yellowing, stunting, and uh, uh, premature defoliation. Not premature defoliation. Yellowing is the main one. and wilting and stunting can be also can be observed the most prominent uh, identification symptom that we can distinguish between fungal wilt or bacterial wilt is in fungal wilt there is no ooze out can be observed whereas in bacterial wilt ooze out can be observed if you take the infected plant parts if you cut open the stem or vascular bundle we can see ooze out or white color uh, liquid material or substance that can be ex uh, uh, exudated from this particular infected plants that indicates that it is caused by bacteria so that is the main uh, differentiation between fungal wilt and bacterial wilt in bacterial wilt we can see the ooze out symptom whereas in fungal wilt we can't able to observe that ooze out so coming to the management aspects so we can go with the resistant varieties of the resistant varieties are available for this bacterial uh, wilt and crop rotation with the crucifer vegetables such as especially cauliflower can help to reduce the incidence of this disease because it is a soil borne disease so crop rotation is one of the best alternate practice for the control of this bacterial wilt not only for bacterial wilt but also for fungal wilt and a field should be kept clean and you know uh, affected plants if there is infected plants uh, or you know uh, stubbles will be there so better to collect and uh, burn them and spraying of copper oxy chloride can control the disease and we can also recommend 0.2 uh, sorry 2% of bodo mixture on this and uh, i think some of the cases uh, you know uh, presence of uh, nematodes also can in, uh, can uh, 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 can be one of the reason and because you know if you take a uh, wilt disease some of the wilt like banana wilt or some of the wilt diseases that can be associated with the nematodes so what will happen this nematodes can make wounds or this nematodes can make wounds so that the pathogen can be easily enter into uh, uh, pa pathogen can be easily enter into the plants so here in a nematode fungal complex or nematode wilt complex what will happen this nematode only can make the wounds it don't have any role or you know or sometimes some of the plant viral diseases can be transmitted by nematode that is another case in this case in wilt association of uh, nematodes the nematodes will mainly do uh, uh, create the wounds so the through created wounds the fungal pathogens can enter into the inside plant and the colonization and the production of spores all those things will happen inside so nematodes association also can enhance the uh, efficiency or can enhance the virulence of the pathogen so that the disease will be very very severe if it is associated with the nematodes so the next one is a collar rot which is caused by sclerotium ralphsi whatever the disease if it is a caused by sclerotium ralphsi the common symptoms are white color mycelial growth can be seen on the collar region in the severe stages what will happen brown color or mustard shaped sclerotia sometimes white color sclerotia sometimes orange color sclerotia can be seen on collar region the most prominent symptoms are white color mycelial growth can be observed on the uh, uh, you know uh, observed on the collar region along with the mustard shaped sclerotia or orange shaped sclerotia can be observed on the collar region that indicates that this is uh, uh, caused by the sclerotium ralphsi in later stages what will happen the uh, the plant will slowly starts to die and entire uh, plant look like to stunting or desiccation or something wilting like symptoms also can be observed 
coming to the management aspects uh, the sclerosis will say soil bone disease is the best management practice for the sclerosis is uh, uh, application of uh, biocontrol agent uh, because the soil bone pathogen we can go with the biocontrol agents so that will be one of the alternate best alternate practice for controlling of uh, uh, soil bone diseases so seed treatment with the uh, Trichoderma virid at 4 gram per kilogram of uh, uh, seeds can be one of the uh, best method for reducing our incidence of the disease. And along with the spraying of mango zip at the rate of 2 gram per liter of water can also reduce the incidence of this disease. So coming to the next one, little leaf which is caused by pytoplasma, very very important one. So most characteristics, most diagnostic symptoms of the little leaf of brinjal is very very important one. If you see the leaves, or if you see the upper leaves or the young leaves, it look like to bushy appearance. It look like to bushy appearance. That's why in, in, they will, uh, you know, in uh, uh, in exam uh, 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 orientation, uh, the symptoms will be like uh, the green leaf or green floral pots are converted into green leaf like structure or floral pots. This we can see here. The young pots or floral pots are converted into green leaf like structure. This is the most diagnostic symptom of little leaf of brinjal. So here the size of the leaf can be reduced. The size of the leaf can be reduced and it look like to, you know, uh, uh, compared to the normal size, uh, uh, the size will be greatly reduced and floral pots are converted into green leaf like structure, which is a very, very important one. So the mode of spread is, uh, it is a phytoplasmal disease, which is mainly spread by leaf hopper. That is Hishimonas pisetis is the leaf hopper, uh, scientific name of leaf hopper, which is involved in the transmission of this is, this is the Hishimonas pisetis. So coming to the management uh, aspects, uh, roguing of uh, infected plants and eradication of all solanaceous weed hosts where it acts as alternate host, I mean, uh, 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 I mean, uh, harboring the pathogen or host, especially vectors. And spraying of malathion 0.05 percent because uh, you know uh, it is a, a vector borne disease so if you control the vector the disease can be automatically controlled for fungal disease we can recommend fungicide for bacterial diseases we can recommend the antibiotics for viral disease we don't have commercial viricides so that we can recommend and sorry we can recommend uh, uh, an insecticide because most of the viral diseases are vector borne diseases. If we control the vector, we can automatically control the disease. So here it is a vector borne disease so that the controlling of vector we can recommend uh, insecticide that is a malathion 0.05% can control the leaf hopper so that the disease spread can be uh, uh, restricted so that the disease can be eliminated. So here and uh, spraying of antibiotics also can uh, give a little bit relief that you know 10 to 15 pp uh, sorry 50 ppm of uh, tetracycline solution or 50 to 100 ppm of chloromphenicol solution also can give uh, relief and it's a better management factor among all is growing of resistant varieties like uh, arkashreel or aushi or banaras these are all the resistant varieties developed for uh, uh, little leaf of brinjal so coming to the questions related to arsr net uh, the most important question we can expect is a little leaf of brinjal mostly they will ask vector what is the vector for little leaf of brinjal so little leaf of brinjal which is a vector is a leaf hopper which is transmitted by leaf hopper that is Hishimonas pisetis and uh, you know uh, the probable chances of asking our questions are maybe causal organism something like pomopsis blight or, uh, or root rot or something like that maybe uh, causal organisms there might be a chance but the little leaf of brinjal is very very important.